There's a great deal of interest in small modular reactors in Canada these days, and uh, I've done seven or eight uh, interviews about some various aspects of SMRs. So today we're going to be interviewing Ali Siddiqui of the Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, which has developed a new fuel pellet technology. So welcome to the interview, Ali. Thank you very much. Well, look, can you, I don't know much about nuclear technology. In fact, I would, I'm probably like most Canadians. Uh, could you explain wh uh, what the new technology is and why it's important? Sure, uh, absolutely. So uh, this new fuel technology is, uh, is actually developed by a company called uh, uh, USNC, and we were working with them on contract to prove out their uh, development of this new fuel, uh, develop a prototype, uh, and, uh, and we're doing that under a new program that we've established at CNL to link up with uh, vendors and uh, move their technology forward. Uh, SMRs are, as you say, a, a growing interest to solve uh, problems related to climate change. And uh, this innovative fuel concept is, uh, is a really core feature of USNC's technology. Now, my understanding of nuclear fuel is basically that they come in rods uh, in nuclear reactors normally. Now you've to put them into a pellet. Is it basically the same fuel in pellet form? So this fuel concept is quite a bit different than uh, standard fuel. Uh, typical fuel in a, in a nuclear reactor is compressed into ceramic pellets and then loaded into uh, bundles that are uh, in metallic uh, rods. Uh, that is, uh, is pretty standard in most of the conventional reactors that exist around the world today. Uh, this technology uses something called TRISO particles. So TRISO is an acronym that stands for tri-structural isotop isotropic uh, pellets, which essentially takes very tiny kernels of uranium and coats that in multiple layers that are very robust to contain that fuel. Uh, essentially, each pellet has its own containment vessel around it. Uh, this technology by uh, USNC uh, actually takes those pellets and loads them within uh, a larger fuel pellet and compresses that into a ceramic uh, uh, coating. So that is actually in a, a very robust material called silicon carbide. So it's an additional layer even on top of those triso particles to contain that fuel. Those pellets would then be loaded into a, a core for their reactor concept, the, uh, the MMR reactor. And, and that's uh, you know, the, the difference between this technology versus sort of conventional uh, reactor fuel. So what are the advantages of the, of the new uh, pellet technology, Ali? Is it more uh, energy available? Is, the, is it a waste? Does it make it easier to handle waste? Uh, what are the advantages? So the major advantage of TRISO uh, fuel, uh, and in this format, uh, the, the additional advantage is, number one, it is extremely robust. So TRISO pellets uh, contain all of that fuel within these very small, almost uh, poppy uh, seed-sized uh, kernels of fuel. Uh, this retains any fission products or any, any uh, waste within that uh, kernel. Uh, the silicon carbide layer that goes on the outside of these uh, kernels that contains this uh, in a fuel pellet form is also extremely robust. So again, retaining uh, any kind of fuel within that. Um, the, the concept that uh, USNC has for this fuel actually would allow their reactor to run upwards of, I think, 20 years. So, so it's the kind of uh, fuel that you'd put into the reactor once and then that would stay there for the life of the reactor. So does, does that mean that we need less uranium to generate X amount of electricity? So this, uh, this fuel concept would uh, still use uranium, just like conventional reactors. Uh, unlike the, the standard reactors that exist in Canada today, which are the, the CANDU style, which use natural uranium, the, uh, the reference fuel here is uh, using uranium that is uh, low enriched uranium up to just under 20%. Uh, of uranium-235, and that uh, increase uh, in, in that uh, low enriched uranium allows the reactor to run much longer uh, than, than a conventional reactor. Okay, and so does this fuel uh, potentially give Canadian designed SMRs a competitive advantage over other SMR designs? 
So, so there's many different SMR designs that exist out there uh, today that are on the drawing board. This particular uh, fuel uh, and this concept of a reactor is the one that is uh, in our invitation and siting process at CNL right now. So we launched a, an invitation process a couple of years ago uh, to host a demonstration SMR. It's an open invitation process that many SMR vendors uh, are, are invited to, to join. Uh, and this, uh, this reactor is actually uh, furthest along in that process. And we're in, in discussions with them now about actual siting locations on our Chalk River site. Uh, and uh, each SMR is sort of tailored to different uh, economic opportunities and different use cases. So the uh, MMR reactor uh, is, is sized to produce about five megawatts electric power. Um, and so it would be the appropriate size for a remote application, for example, uh, a mine or some other remote uh, industrial site. Uh, and, and really citing something like this at Chalk River is a perfect test case to uh, sort of demonstrate the technology uh, and, and sort of kick the tires to, to demonstrate that it can be built on time, on schedule, and it works as, as advertised. Now, Ali, uh, most of, uh, much of the criticism around uh, nuclear power comes from managing the waste afterwards. And so uh, I got to ask, uh, how do, does the, the new uh, fuel technology improve that in, in any ways? Does it affect it? What's, what's, uh, what's the story there? Yeah, so uh, it's a great question, a really important question uh, for nuclear technology in general. There is waste. Um, and I would say uh, it's important to note that any energy generation technology produces waste. And nuclear is, is really uh, unique in the sense that this waste is extremely well contained and accounted for. Uh, so this fuel form, uh, just like other fuel forms that, that are out there right now, um, is, is extremely robust. In fact, this form is, is potentially even more robust in the sense that there's not only the triso particles, but there's additional layers of, uh, of containment on that fuel. Uh, at the end of life of one of these reactors, the, the fuel would be in a, in a similar position to, to fuel at the end of life in an existing reactor. It would have to be cooled for a certain period of time and then stored safely. And so uh, as a solid uh, fuel form, it's likely that this would have to uh, be stored for a period of time to, to bring its temperature down and radioactivity down to a certain level that could then be transported and stored for sort of uh, long-term storage. So is this type of fuel safer? So I, I, it's hard to say when you say safer. Uh, I would say that all reactors that exist in Canada today are extremely safe uh, and that they all have to meet a very high bar for safety to demonstrate that to the regulator in Canada. Uh, and this reactor form would be no different, uh, it would be extremely safe. And, uh, and this fuel is unique in the sense that there are additional layers of safety um, with the triso fuel form and additional silicon carbide uh, fuel pellets. I guess what I meant when I asked about is it safe, I was, I should have been more specific, but I'm thinking about waste. I mean, there are concerns. I've, I've, I've read about some of the problems that the U.S. has had with their uh, New Mexico underground cavern and, and fuel leaking and that sort of stuff. So is this technology uh, an advancement in terms of storing nuclear waste? So uh, I wouldn't say it's a, an, a, an advancement in storing nuclear waste necessarily. You'd still have uh, spent fuel at the end of the day, uh, at the end of that 20 year life, for example. Um, but it is an extremely robust and extremely uh, durable form of that fuel that would be suitable to be stored safely for, for a long period of time. Uh, ultimate storage for uh, fuel waste in Canada is managed by the NWMO, the Nuclear, Nuclear Waste Management Organization. And so currently they're working on an adaptive phase management approach to determine an ultimate location for, uh, for fuel that is at the end of its life in Canada. 
That would be a final question, Ali. I'm, I'm curious about your take on this. I interviewed a fellow from uh, Moltex, and uh, their claim is that they ha can design a reactor that can burn the waste from can-do uh, reactors, and I think extract like 90% of the additional whatever energy is in there, something like that. Uh, the interview is up on our on our YouTube channel. But is that a trend in the industry that we will eventually get to reactors that can burn the waste that we're now storing? Yeah, I, I think it's important to note that in Canada, there are many different SMR designs. And as part of a national uh, Natural Resources Canada-led initiative with an SMR roadmap and more recently the SMR action plan, uh, it lays out different streams of, of SMR technology. Uh, so the first stream is, is sort of on-grid uh, reactors that may be uh, ready to be deployed in the late 2020s. And that technology is looking at building upon existing technologies that exist today. There's also small reactors like the one we're talking about with this uh, fully ceramic micro-encapsulated fuel uh, with the USNC's design that's looking to demonstrate at Chalk River. There's also a stream of, of advanced reactors uh, which New Brunswick is currently pursuing. Uh, and Moltex is one example, and Arc Clean Energy is, is the other. And the interesting feature of both of those designs, which are quite different technically, uh, is they both incorporate some fuel recycling in their, in their concept. And so uh, longer term, uh, I think, you know, my personal opinion, that is a trend uh, where we, we will see more attention in the future. Uh, it certainly has some appeal. Uh, and, and, and that technology, you know, is very advanced. Uh, it's, it's aligned with what's called the Generation 4 International Forum. There's several different designs that are out there for advanced reactors, uh, and many do include some type of um, recycling or closed fuel cycle. Ali, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate your insights. Thanks so much for the opportunity.